Hello, you beautiful, beautiful being. What is up? My name is Jeanette. You probably know that because you're following me. And I'm going to be talking with the beautiful Fruity Eva today. First of all, how are you doing? I want to know one thing that you're grateful for today. Post it in the comments below. I want to know one thing you're grateful for today. The reason why, let me get comfortable here. The reason why I want to know one thing you're grateful for is because that's the absolute best way to manifest. Did you know that, oh, Eva's here. Okay, uh, let me just cut this short. But basically, if you want to manifest more abundance in your life, you've got to be aware of the abundance you already have. So what's one thing you're grateful for? Everyone, Deepak, Lance, oh, you're grateful for me. Of course you are. Sean, what's up? So we're going to go live with Fruity Eva. We're going to talk about the mucusless diet healing system. We're going to talk about, I have lots of questions for her, her book. Um, and we're going to get into it. My awesome running workout. Yes. You've got to be grateful in order to have more things to be grateful for. Cause it's like, whatever we focus on is what we are going to get more of. So what are you focused on? All right, let me get, let me get her in here before I just keep talking the whole time. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to adjust the camera once she joins. Hey, girl, <laughs> what's up? Okay, so what's one thing you're grateful for right now? Actually, I'm super grateful to not be in Germany because the situation with this whole crisis is so bad. It is really, really bad. So, yeah, I'm on the Canary Islands and it's so much better. Like, very chill. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Honestly, I have always wanted to go to the Canary Islands. So, I am so, I'm so happy you're there. I know it's beautiful. You know, it's funny. I actually have a friend who just left the Canary Islands <laughs> to go back to Germany. Isn't that crazy? Whoa, it's crazy. I would not want to go back, but okay. Maybe. <laughs> I, no, it's, I don't know. <laughs> concerned, but I'm great. I'm really happy for you. And somebody's grateful for their psychic abilities. Ooh, listen, let me know the lotto numbers, girl, because I need those. Okay, psychic abilities. That's amazing. Okay, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Thank you for being here. Um, I just want to let you guys know, uh, before we get into the interview, that... I'm very grateful and honored to be part of something called the Vegan Foodie Bundle. So it's very different than the last bundle. The bundle that we just were in was called the raw, the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. That was 100% raw vegan, low fat. Um, and this bundle is more for everyone, okay? It's for everyone that wants to be healthy, okay? You don't need to be raw to be healthy. In fact, that's what we're gonna talk about today, something called the mucusless diet uh, that, we're both, uh, that, both, that we both got inspired by um, because it doesn't demonize cooked food, right? There is some cooked food that makes you feel better than some raw food, okay? We're gonna get into that. Um, and so the raw, the vegan foodie bundle is available if you click the link in Eva's bio or my bio, you can check it out. It's only available until Monday. And uh, somebody, Deepak said, I hear they're locking Spain, hopefully not uh, Grand Canaries. Yeah, it's very horrible. What The world has gone to shit. And <laughs> basically, we need to take care of ourselves because yeah. we've got, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We've got like, a battle to fight. And if we're not feeling our best, if we're not in good health, it's gonna be hard for us to stay positive in this new world. So I think being healthy and um, inspiring others to be healthy is so important right now. Everybody watching this, if you, you are watching this because you are called, you are being called to inspire others to be healthy in the way that you are passionate about. Me and Eva are obviously passionate about eating food and um, you know being healthy with food, but there's so many other ways, okay? Your, your sleep, uh, nature, spirituality, meditation, exercise, there's all types of things that go into being healthy. So let me get it, let me stop talking and let me start asking Eva some questions. Um, first of all, Eva, first of all, I love your name. Fruity Eva. What <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a name like that. I don't know why. You know what? At the time when I made this account, I wasn't very fruity. I think that's why. I was still. Oh. 
raw vegan, but I wasn't like obsessed with fruit at the time. So my <laughs> is why did you, how did you learn about the fruit based lifestyle? Uh, I want to know, um, yeah, what was your, tell us about like how old you were when you adopted this lifestyle and what changes you have seen? I love that question. Thank you so much for asking. And it's a great question. So I actually was vegetarian before. Like with 12, I went vegetarian because I saw videos about factory farming. And I was so sad. And I was like, no, I don't want to eat it. And yeah, and I stopped eating meat basically. But in the beginning, it was hard because I'm from Germany, from the southern part of Germany, which is Bavaria, super traditional, super conservative, like meat basically the whole diet consists of meat and bread <laughs> and that's all they eat and and dairy so it was actually really hard but i made it happen because it was like Phew, no it's so terrible how animals are treated so i went vegetarian but i didn't know about veganism so i was super scared about veganism was like no like vegans live in caves and everyone like my family was saying okay you're a vegetarian you accept that but vegan you cannot go vegan so i was scared of it and three years later i discovered actually a vegan youtube channel and i got super inspired learned about the health benefits learned about the benefits for the environment and of course the animals and that dairy is actually super cruel and that also in the dairy production and egg production animals have to be cooked so I went vegan and I, I actually already knew about raw veganism because I watched some videos of Fully Raw Christina but again I was there were so many limiting beliefs and so many myths about the raw vegan diet like it's too expensive it's not like you cannot do it when you live in a cold climate because Germany is a cold climate and yeah, it's just, you know, you will be malnourished or something. So I, I knew about it. I liked the idea. I liked fruit and vegetable. But for me, it didn't really make sense that you could do it in, in real life. But then I watched, um, I think with, with when before I turned 17, I watched a video about Fully Ra Christina. And she was like working. And I saw her friend, which is like a super normal human being, like not like, of course, very pretty, but not like this Instagram personality. No, I don't know. And yeah, and then Fully Ra Christina said, hey, and my friend, she's also raw vegan. And for me, it completely changed everything because I was like, oh, maybe there are more people who are raw vegan. And from that moment on, I just went into research, learned more about a raw vegan diet and tried it out. And I was pretty lucky. I think that I, from the very beginning, read the book, The Age 10 10 Diet, which really helped me to understand why low fat, why a lot of fruit. And for me, it made a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm also maybe a little bit lazy in the kitchen and I don't like cleaning so much. So yeah, for me, fruit made sense. I love fruit. I feel amazing on fruit. And I would recommend for everyone who's maybe interested, just try it out for two days because I can remember and it's over four and a half years now. But for an over four and a half years now, I remember what the moment that I tried it for the first time and I just felt like super, super human. Like I felt so good, like I was flying. And I would just recommend for, every, for anyone who's interested to try it out. It's super life-changing and I still believe it's the best decision that I've made so far to, yeah, just try it out and to stick with it. Yeah, wow, a lot to unpack there because I have other questions. First of all, I love that you, I love your story because you talk about, you know, Fully Raw Christina. Um, and you know, some of these YouTubers, it can seem like they're not like relatable, you know? And so you saw her friend and you were like, oh, she's like a normal person. She's not like a YouTuber, you know? And she's not like, this is not, um, she's just a regular person. This is not her career. She's like doing this. And so it's so important, like everyone out there that hears this, like know that you can inspire someone no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what phase of your journey you're on. Like see, Eva was inspired by Fully Rock Christina's friend, you know? Like obviously Fully Rock Christina is super inspiring, right? Um, and was that the YouTube channel that you discovered? You said you discovered a YouTuber that was raw or? Good question. I think in the, right in the beginning, I the first was Fully Rock Christina and then of course, Lisa from Rafford Romance, I discovered Ted Carr, and I discovered also one girl, which is called, oh, 
Tamara, maybe, and from, from 40 Below 30, and she was eating, like, raw vegan, and she's from Canada, and she made it work somehow, and this gave me a lot of hope, because summertime is easy, but when it's winter time, it can be a little bit more tricky, so, yeah, these were the first ones, and then, like, one, uh, like, I discovered more, and yes. Yeah, oh my gosh, listen, 40 Below Fruity, I remember years yeah. ago, <laughs> What happened? Still doing YouTube? She actually she 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 moved to Sweden and it's it's also super cold there. So so she recently made a video saying that she she's not raw vegan anymore, but she still loves like she will be forever vegan and she loves it, but she's not raw anymore because it's just too difficult in Sweden. And yeah, now she makes like I think a new YouTube channel with like videos about different forms of living no slow living like living in a cabin not having like away from the city and all of that yeah um so uh yeah i gotta check her out because i loved her personality i just love how yeah. she was and okay alicia alice alisa asked a question on the question section okay tell me your question because i don't uh see it here and maybe you asked it uh, in my story. I'm so sorry. I didn't see it yet. So let me know your question here and we'll definitely answer it. Um, Megan Elizabeth and Joey B. Yes, I do know what happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, listen, we'll talk about that another day, I guess, but they're no longer vegan or raw. And you know, what happened with them really specifically and everyone that I believe goes back to eating animals is that they are surrounded by meat eaters. That's just my opinion, yeah. right? And it's, it, it just happened. Like if you marry someone or you're best friends with someone or you have a community of people that are not vegan, eventually you will go back to eating. If you're not super strong, you know, if you're yeah. not very independent, eventually you get affected because you become some of the top five people you hang around. So listen, I do know many, many vegans that are married to non-vegans, but their husbands or wives eat mostly vegan, you know? Yeah. So they've become more vegan than non. Um, but, you know, if you're hanging around people that believe that eating a vegan diet is not healthy, eventually you will get affected by that. And I believe that's what happened there in Hawaii. I have a friend that says Ve Hawaii is the place that vegans go to die, like, or to eat meat, you know? <laughs> I have a friend that, that so many uh, vegans that went to Hawaii are now eating meat. That's another topic that we'll get into another day. It's very unfortunate um, because I was a big fan of Megan Elizabeth. I met her a few times. I loved her channel. She deleted it now, uh, Easy To Be Raw. She was, she had such great recipes. She was a genius in the kitchen. And so, okay, let's get back to uh, the questions for Fruity Eva. Now, I want to talk about the mucusless diet. When is the first time you heard about this, um, this diet, this lifestyle? I think that's, that's a great question. I think about around one year into the journey of being mostly raw vegan, because um, Arnold Ehret is originally from Germany, so I don't know why, but like he's a little bit more famous in Germany. And so there's a great German YouTube channel who talks very specifically about this, like this philosophy about the mucusless diet healing system. So I could learn a lot from that YouTube channel. And yeah, so I think with 18 and, and it helped me a lot because I, I, I had quite rough detox because I never really did a transition. Of course, I was vegan before, but I was vegan. And then I went straight into like, l like only fruits and some vegetables, not really nuts and seeds. So I had really harsh detox, lost a lot of mucus. And the mucusless diet healing system helped me basically to understand okay, what is happening right now, why is this happening, it's okay that this is happening or that I have headaches or with mucus and yeah, it explained a lot for me. And also, okay, I, I personally don't do fasting because I like to eat food, but it's just so interesting also to learn about fasting or to learn about different ways to heal people or how people can heal and also the connection between food and disease 
it's just something that I'm so interested and passion interested in and passionate about because it's not being taught in school. In school, you have like if you're sick, you go to a doctor. That's the like I don't know how it is in the USA or in different countries, but in Germany, it's it's there's only this option, and you don't really talk about different ways of healing. And in Germany, especially like the government or schools or whatever, they they don't they just say. Get a, like get I don't want to say it but uh, get medication there's no other way and if you try other ways of healing it will not work or it's just a waste of time or something and I think this is so sad I think they're like actually before the western medicine there have been so many different ways of healing and I think even though it maybe does not work for you it did work for so many people so I think it's just important to bring it back into the conversation about healing that fasting can definitely contribute a lot to healing and yeah it can actually be in my opinion better than for example taking different medication cocktails or something that you don't have any idea what is in it so I think it's it's just important to talk about different ways of healing and this this book is I believe a super great introduction into that topic. Yeah, I completely agree, Eva. Um, as far as healing goes, you know, Arnold Eret, he, he talks about like he, fasting being the fastest way to heal. And that is why it's called fasting. Um, now, you know, fasting has been um, misconstrued in a way where some people want to fast to lose weight or to, you know, whatever, right, to cleanse. But um, I really, and let me know what you think, but I truly only believe we should be fasting if we are sick, you know? Do you agree? Exactly, I agree. I agree definitely, especially like, unfortunately in the raw free community, there are some people who overdo it, <laughs> in my opinion, and then they, they fast too much and then they go back to eating like fast food, etc. So I agree, definitely. But I think maybe in some conditions, it could be helpful if you struggle with anything. But for me, I think if you transition to a raw vegan diet with lots of fruit and veg vegetables, your body will naturally detox. And yeah, so for me, I did one time, I did a fast and it was really horrible, actually. It was four days of fasting. And I actually, like I planned it before, like, okay, my mom and dad, they will not be at home, so I can do it. Perfectly planned. However, on the or in the end of the third day my parents came back and for me this fasting experience was so terrible because I don't know what happened but my blood sugar dropped and I was like I was like really skinny and I was like white and I could not really walk so it was really bad and so my parents came home and they were like what is happening like and we had this really bad talk that I should I don't know go to the hospital or something so it was not the best experience and from that moment on i i just think for me that just if you eat more fruit and vegetables and you focus on really making your raw vegan diet work low-fat raw vegan diet based on fruit that's that's the best you can do you don't have to necessarily fast yeah. i agree i think the best cleanse is a healthy vegan diet and when we get too extreme on either side we can have health issues. You know, we all know people that eat really unhealthy, lots of fast food, and they have lots of health issues. And we know people that are obsessed with cleansing, juice cleansing and water fasting, and they have health issues. We don't want to be too extreme. And I love the mucusis diet um, healing system because it is not an extreme diet, okay? It is something where he breaks down what foods create mucus in the body and what foods don't. And we should be eating an abundance of the foods that don't. And yes, uh, you know, you can be a raw foodist, you can be a raw vegan and not be healthy. I was raw vegan and I was not healthy. I was not exercising. I was not sleeping. I was not uh, drinking enough water. I was not eating enough fresh fruit and vegetables. I was eating a lot of dehydrated foods, dates, cacao smoothies, cashew butter, dipping chocolate into cashew butter and eating that and thinking I was a health, uh, a healthy person. And so my next question to you, Eva, is have you ever been a unhealthy raw vegan? Have you ever, besides the, the fasting part where, you know, you realize, <laughs> but maybe this is not the healthiest thing for me to be doing to get to my optimal health. Uh, have you ever felt like you were an unhealthy raw vegan? 
Mm, that that's a very good question because for me I never actually went into high fat because in Germany where we're living we don't really have raw food restaurants so I never went there <laughs> so I I never did that and also like because I knew from the beginning that fat is not the best and it made sense for me so I never went really um I don't know like I was always I was always fruit based for sure and that in the in the first four years I didn't have a dehydrator I didn't have a um yeah any like a dehydrator I didn't have so it was okay but um yeah I don't know <laughs> that's a good question that's a blessing Eva um okay listen before I forget we got a question and I promise to answer it I'm so sorry uh Alicia okay so she has been on a high carb low fat cooked vegan diet for seven years now wow that's amazing congratulations uh she wants to go fully raw uh, but she's naturally skinny now and underweight. How do I gain weight on a raw vegan diet? Eva, what would you say for that? What advice would you give? I love that. So I would say like you have to invest more time eating because when you eat raw food, you, I mean, if I compare the time that I eat to the time back then, when, like because when you are vegan, you just eat a bread and then you're good for three hours. But when you go raw vegan, you just eat fruit and then you maybe after two hours or one hour, you want some more fruit and it's okay. So definitely plan more time to eat fruit. And yeah, and then I, I can recommend food that really uh, fills you up is bananas. And you can also put dates in a smoothie because then you can put maybe bananas and dates in a smoothie and that's really filling. And for me, what helps me to be carved up or something is to have at least one banana meal per day and that's because yeah it's, bananas are super cheap here so and also in Germany so it just helps me to keep the cost relatively low to have one big banana meal let it be a smoothie or let it be a like a like fruit salad with banana and different fruit and to have that and in the, in the evening you can still have um maybe I love actually if you want to stay low fat raw vegan then I, I would recommend to do salad dressings and make them with a lot of dates for example one amazing sauce that i have is if you blend dates with sun-dried tomatoes or dried tomatoes tomato if you want to and to make it more creamy you can add um, any nuts or seeds but you don't have to and some lemon and spices and it's amazing and it, it has so many calories in it because it's because of the dates but you don't really you don't taste the dates it's just sweet and sour and it's the perfect sauce so i can recommend that i'm gonna make that very soon oh my gosh it sounds so good and i'm always <laughs> for like new low-fat uh dressings i would say the exact same thing i can't say it any better than what eva just said uh that would be the key is to eat high calorically dense fruits like like bananas like bananas and dates i just made a new fruit Dates and bananas is bananas. Um, bananas and dates, uh, you know, persimmons are in season right now. They have some calories in there. Uh, mangoes, when you can get them. Um, you know, like, try to get some dense fruit into your diet. Um, and don't, uh, don't focus on what you can't eat. Focus on what you can eat and make sure to eat enough. Like Eva just said everything that you need to know. And she's got a lot more recipes in her book. So check out her book, link in her bio or my bio, um, we're part of a new foodie bundle. It's called the Vegan Foodie Bundle, which has a bunch of cooked and raw food recipe books, as well as a uh, fitness course. We've got a yoga book in there. We've got a book on self-love. There's a lot of different uh, books in there, and they're on sale only until Monday, so check that out. And then somebody asked, um, somebody said nice cream. Yeah, so my banana meal every single day is nice cream. Uh, my favorite, okay, yeah. so if you're having issues with weight, which I personally have never had issues with, okay, I've had issues where I, I <laughs> right, like I've never been, when I was a kid, I was skinny, right, I was too skinny, but now as a raw foodist, I've always eaten a high fat raw vegan diet, like that was my first seven years, so I always was like trying to lose weight, and um, now I find myself like 
it's a struggle sometimes for me to keep it no fat or low fat because I'm so used to having, you know, the nut butters and the cashews and the, so, so here's the thing. I would put in hemp seeds into your smoothies or your ice cream because it's going to add some healthy fat and it will maybe help you gain weight as well. Uh, make sure get in those bananas and dates and we don't want to have too much fat, but I find that hemp seeds is probably like the, one of the healthier fats out there. Don't be afraid of eating a few avocados a week. I know you want to keep it low fat, but if you want to gain weight, this is a great way. Avocados are high in calories and still pretty healthy, right? Some people are eating McDonald's. So, you know, let's not be too obsessed with the low fat thing. Um, but, you know, gaining weight, it can be hard. It can be hard on a low fat or no fat raw vegan diet. So maybe add in some healthy fat. Okay, is kimchi considered raw vegan? It doesn't say on the jar. Hmm, Eva, would you consider kim? Do you eat kimchi? Mm, good question. Actually, I I think I I tried it, but I don't make it at home, and I have not because to be honest, the Canary Islands there is no health food store, so they don't really have that. And if I would buy it in a normal supermarket, it would be full of salt and full of like additives. So no, but I, I think. Um, you, you you can make it at home and you can ferment it. So I think you can make it raw, no? But I'm I'm no expert in it. Yeah, I mean, technically, I guess it's considered, in my opinion, I thought it was always raw. I thought, you know, the word raw is so like open, to, <laughs> um, you know, opinion, because yeah. the word raw is not really, it's not regulated, certainly not by the FDA. Anything can be considered raw or not raw. They write on the cashews, raw cashews, but there's no such thing as a raw cashew. Raw cashews are poisonous. We cannot consume raw cashews. So, you know, the raw cashew butter is not raw. And so what I would say is, if you feel good when you eat kimchi, then continue eating kimchi. That's what I would recommend. I personally eat it once in a while. I'm not like a big kimchi person. I don't like the way it smells personally. But if you feel good and you want to eat it and, you know, because there's lots of benefits to it, um, then eat it. Listen, it's, it's vegan. It's healthy. Just focus on being a healthy vegan instead of a raw foodist, I would say. And that's why the mucus's diet is so great because it kind of like helped me stop being a perfectionist. You know, I was the same way. I was like, is sauerkraut raw or is kimchi raw or is this raw? You know, it, it had to be raw. But turns out a lot of the raw things I was eating was not healthy. Raw Snickers bars every day, they were not healthy, you know? And by the way, Eva, did you know that there's a question section? I never knew this. I just discovered this just now. If you press, do you see the, the, uh, the question mark on the bottom? Yes. Oh, no. Have a, this is new, no? It's like it's the first time that I, I see it, to be honest. Late to everything always. But, okay, we have another question, and I'm going to read it from Non D. Thank you for your patience. I'm so sorry about this. So, <laughs> Fully raw vegan. I give into healthy cooked food veggies when hungry or when I'm tempted. How do I get over this? Great question. Eva, what advice would you give to somebody who keeps getting tempted by healthy cooked food? You know, she eats like veggies and stuff and she doesn't want to anymore. I love that question because for me, it's the same. Like for me, what, what triggers me is not really fast food or meat because I'm like, for me, that's not food anymore. So that's easy to not eat basically or say no to. But what's hard for me still um, is like things like uh, cooked vegetables or things like cooked, um, I don't know. Okay, potatoes I don't really eat, but cooked vegetable, it's still hard for me. And what helps me is to, first of all, um two things like first of all you don't w what i do if if you don't want to eat it is to say because actually when you heat food you change the molecular structure so if you really want to stay raw then just you know push through it and say no today i want to stay raw and then with time it gets easier but on the other hand what i really want to say also is because jeanette you said before this perfectionist perfectionist mindset actually i think um, of course, if you want to not eat cooked vegetables, you will realize that after some time it will not taste as good and you will naturally not crave it so much. So for example, cooked vegetables, I don't really crave. But if it happens that you eat it, don't like don't be so angry to yourself or something because as I said before, like you have to have the big picture. If you um, 
yeah, if, if it happens that you eat some cooked vegetables or something, it's no, it's really no big deal because over time you will crave them less. You will maybe eat more fruit and you will naturally crave them less or make learn how to make delicious delicious salads. You will crave them less, but it's it's no... Because I would, back then, unfortunately, some years ago or some month ago, I don't know, I was like really beating myself up about eating cooked vegetables or something and yeah it's it's not the end of the world and you don't have to be 100% raw f like forever always because I think for me because for me that's a like being high raw vegan or fruit based is 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 my life I want to do it my whole life and I, like I change the way that I live my life changes maybe I go to different countries so I always want to do my best and yeah, it helped me really to integrate it more into my life and not obsess about it too much so mm -hmm. i know but i don't know if it make made sense yeah it does great advice okay i would ask you uh the person that asked this question i would say do you not want to eat cooked veggies because they make they don't make you feel good or because you just want to stay raw because okay let's go with if she says they don't make her feel good like the next day she doesn't feel good Okay, so you want to stay raw because you want to feel good and you don't want to eat cooked veggies. So then I would recommend, one, it's because it's probably because you're bored with your raw food, right? Oh, I'm so happy you're still here. Okay, so she's still here. So one, maybe you're bored with your raw food, so you've got to get more recipes. There's a million free recipes on YouTube. Uh, you can buy the bundle that we're in or you don't have to. You can go to Google, you can go, there's so many. I have a free recipe book. Um, Eva will probably send you some recipes. She has so many on her page. You've got to find more recipes that make you don't feel like you're missing out or you're bored, right? On the raw vegan diet because I've been there before where I'm eating the same thing every day. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, cooked veggies are gonna look appealing because it's something new. We need variety. We need variety. That's why I uh, love to be part of these bundles. Like, um, and I'm sure you do too as well, because it helps. It's something that I wish that I had years ago. I need a variety of recipes in my roster, in my rotation so that I don't get bored and I don't crave things that I don't want to eat. The other thing I would say is um, if you, uh, if you want, get a dehydrator. If you really want to stay raw, and it's really important to you and you don't feel good when you eat cooked veggies, get a dehydrator and make some of these, you know, low fat gourmet recipes from, you know, raw food romance or um, Eva, do you have any, uh, I don't think you have any dehydrated recipes, right? No, no, nope. your book, uh, because I don't personally <laughs> use my dehydrator. It doesn't make me feel good when I eat dehydrated food. Um, it doesn't make me feel great either when I eat cooked food. So like, I understand the question very well. Um, but I think that it's something that we have to just come to terms with. Like, I don't feel that cooked food, like veggies are super unhealthy, right? They don't make me feel my best, but like they make me feel better than some raw food. You know, eating raw vegan gourmet food every night, I would be sick. I feel mm -hmm. so thirsty. I hate waking up feeling thirsty. I hate feeling tired. I hate feeling low in a low mood. So that's why I stay uh, on a fruit-based diet and um, you know, Listen, if you're going to give me a choice, though, between some cooked veggies, no salt added, no oil, or a raw vegan gourmet pizza with salt and oil and nuts and cashews and things like that, I'm going to choose the cooked veggies, okay, every time. Now, if you want to stay raw, you got to keep an abundance of fresh fruit in your house and veggies. Uh, the frozen fruit and veggies help as well in emergency times. Um, and don't buy the, the veggies that you don't want to eat, right? Like, you don't want to cook, you know, if you don't want to have cooked veggies, don't buy them. Don't keep that stuff in your house. Um, but also, you know, definitely I would get the book. I would get the Mucus Healing System and not demonize cooked food anymore because there is some cooked food that is healthier than raw. And what you want to do is be healthy. You don't want to, you don't need to be focused on being raw or being like your favorite YouTuber or eating any way that doesn't make you feel the best. Okay, so that's my short answer. I have a lot of videos on this as well. So if you want to check out my YouTube. Uh, when I did fully raw days, I have a food processor and blender. I had smoothies, mango salads, big ones with low fat sauces. Dehydrator has to save money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, you don't need a dehydrator to be raw. No. Eva, do you, do, you, do you have a dehydrator? Actually, the funny thing is I have one, but it's in Germany. So 
I was because I was um, in the Canary Islands for 10 months and I went back to Germany for two months had I I bought a dehydrator because I wanted to try every different recipe but the thing is in Germany there is not so amazing fruit quality so mm -hmm. if I could choose between a dehydrator and not so good fruit quality and the Canary Islands where the fruit quality is just so much better but I just have a blender I I, I just choose the Canary Islands with better fruit and and I can definitely because my my blender actually broke I think one month ago and you can still make it work you just need a knife and okay it's, it's maybe not the the most amazing thing but you can still make it work just eat more fresh fruit and it's possible so I probably I can say I did it so many times you don't need any tools or something to make it work yeah, and this is just a mindset, you know, like Eva has a positive mindset. Her blender broke and she's like, all right, <laughs> I'm not going to go back to eating crap. I'm just going to make it work. And, you know, I, as soon as you said that, Eva, I was like, oh my God, I could never live without my blender. But yes, that's it's not. <laughs> I traveled before. And when I travel, I don't bring a blender. In fact, mm -hmm. I tried and now I know you cannot bring a blender on a plane. They took it away. They threw out my blender. I didn't know. Yeah. Whoa. Because the blades. So they actually, at the airport long ago, long time ago, they uh, took out the blade, threw it away, and gave me my blender. And I was like, could you just throw away the blender? Because now it's useless to me. I don't have a blade. You know, like, it was unbelievable. So, um, yes. Uh, I have traveled without a blender, and you make it work. And it's, listen, it's a mindset. Do you want to be healthy or not? Do you want to... Um, you know, like uh, fix the issues that you might have, health issues that you might have or not. What is your priority? You know, is your priority focused on being a victim or being a victor? That, that's what it really breaks down to. Um, okay, so great questions. Thank you guys so much. Oh, we have another one. Listen, this, do you see the one in the question thing? Uh, I just see that. Wait, wait which one? There's like a red one now where the question mark is, but I don't know, maybe I can just see that. Okay. No. So I have another question here. Um, are, oh, uh, are steamed veggies bad? Okay, thank you. Wow, I never knew about this feature, it's so cool. Okay, <laughs> steamed veggies bad? I think that was probably an older question, I'm not sure. But um, no, steamed veggies are actually recommended. Sorry, there's construction. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, they're recommended in the mucus's diet. Steamed veggies are recommended as a transition food or as a staple, much better. I would recommend steamed veggies much better than, honestly, avocado, okay? When I eat, av and, and I don't know what you would say, Eva, but like when I eat steamed veggies, I'm not talking about potatoes. Potatoes are very like addicting to me. I can't I, eat. For me too, for me too. But like steamed carrots, steamed peas, uh, what else would I eat? Um, carrots, peas, like greens. Um, uh, I can't think of any other veggies personally at the moment that I would eat. Oh, tomatoes. These things, like, these are like healthy. This is not not healthy. I would say, you know, some raw food is not healthy over that. Avocados, they make me feel like crap the next day and I feel the mucus forming. Uh, I break out easily when I eat avocado. So would you say steamed veggies are healthy? I agree. Like, I also think you, you always have to put things into perspective, maybe. Because if you go Ravian or if you go fruit-based, you, you're already doing so much, like, so healthy. So because for me in the beginning, I really, I wanted to be 100% raw all the time. And it was hard, like, when you travel or something. And once you really put away this perfectionist mindset, and you you say, okay, I want to do it my whole life. How can I make it happen? It's okay if you eat cooked veggies. Like, it's not the end of the world. So I think, may, okay, maybe fresh fruit is the best. Fresh fruit, fresh, fresh vegetable is the best. But if you, for example, I don't know, you have your work and then you go with your work to, to I don't know, like two days with your work because you have to go there and they just have cooked vegetables. It's not the end of the world. So... Yeah. yeah, the I agree. I'm sorry about the construction, if you guys can hear that. But listen, the end of the world to me is for you to go back to eating crap. Processed food, 
animal products, um, junk food, fast food. That to me is the end of the world. So to prevent that, to prevent the end of the world, steamed veggies are a great option. Like if I go to somebody's house and they make steamed veggies, I'm gonna be like, is there any oil or salt in there? If they say no, I will have some. Why not? They made it for me. I will have some. I have my boundaries and my standards, right? I'm not going to ever eat oil or salt. It just doesn't make me feel good. And I just wanted to read a quote real quick from Arnold Eretz's book because this is a great quote that uh, Eva was talking about, giving up the per perfection mindset. Arnold Eretz says that he differs from the raw food fanatics. So, yes, you can be a fanatic with anything, right? And you don't want to be, like, fanatic. You want to be healthy. He says, because the food value is not important in a diet of healing. It is more important that the patient should and shall enjoy his or her diet during the transition until their tastes and conditions have improved. So in this regard, if you're finding it difficult to, be, to eat a 100% raw food diet, if it's difficult for you, have some healthy cooked food, some veggies, uh, some cooked fruit. I used to love to put apples in the oven with some cinnamon and some raisins and dates and maple syrup. Amazing, amazing. Like, listen, if you're feeling deprived, eat some healthy cooked veggies. Why not? What is the problem? Don't add or any oil or salt, add spices instead. And I, I think Eva would agree as well. It's important that you enjoy your diet, especially when you're transitioning, especially if you're not craving, if you're not a big fruit person, okay? Like I know some people, they just, they could never eat a fruit-based diet, but they can eat a vegetable-based diet right? With some savory fruits like tomatoes and cucumbers and zucchini and things like that, more based with that. So, okay. Um, Eva, last question. I don't want to hold you up. I'm sorry. I know you have dance and I don't want to... No, no, it's okay. I have it later. Like, okay. I have... Um, okay. So someone says, I avoid... Oh, Ash, Ash... Wait, Alicia. Am I saying it right, Alicia? I avoid junk food, soda, coffee, chocolate, oil. Yes, 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 yes. Please, you want to avoid these things. Let's not demonize veggies. Cooked <laughs> or baked veggies, so much better than coffee, chocolate, salt, and oil. These things are poison to the human body. You're not going to feel good. You're going to have health issues if you eat those things. No animal products, including palm oil, uh, RIP orangutans. Yes, yes. Any type of oil is a processed food. We don't want to eat processed foods. What is the name of the book? Okay, so there's two books. One is the original. It's called The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett. This one is great. This one was written in 1910, I believe. It was, it's a classic that nobody really knows about because it's like, well, a lot of truths in our society are hidden, you know? And Arnold Errett was actually killed, okay? I don't know if you're aware of that, Eva. Yeah, you're aware of that. Uh, he was killed in his prime when he was giving talks around the world about how dangerous eating animal products were, okay? You know? So he was getting very popular. And then there's another book, which is the same book, but it's annotated. So it's called The Mucosis Diet Healing System, annotated by Professor Spira. It's more translated into modern day English. Um, and I know this book has been translated into many um, languages as well. Um, it's in uh, Spanish and Israeli and maybe German, uh, you know, so many different, mm -hmm. you can check it out all over the world, wherever you are whatever your um, favorite language is. Um, and now I would just like to ask Eva really quickly, I want to know what are some health foods that you once thought were healthy that you no longer consume? Oh, everything I would say when I like, I mean, I mean, I was eating when I went vegetarian, I was so afraid of veganism. So I ate so much dairy and I ate like milk. I drank, every day almost one liter of milk like i blended it with bananas every day so of course now i know this is so bad for you i also believe and i think this is something that is maybe triggering to some people but whole whole wheat bread like in germany we have bread with a lot of seeds and nuts but what actually happens if when you make this bread that because when you heat food um, and you bake the bread for 40 minutes, the molecular structure changes a lot. And so a lot of the fats become into trans fats, I believe. So it's actually not that healthy. So bread is really not that healthy. Pasta also is really not that healthy because um, when you heat the food, you can imagine like when you put pasta into, into and you cook it and you forget it, it becomes this mush. And this mush actually 
works the same in your body. Like when, when your body digests the pasta or bread, it develops this mush and it can mess up really your your colon. So yeah, I would say almost everything. Dairy is not healthy. Meat is not healthy. Um, bread and pasta is not healthy. And also... Of course, if you overdo it on nut butters, and what I also believe, for example, like um, I don't know how to say in English, but the the syrup of like when you, for example, ma maple syrup, extracted syrup is not healthful because it has no vitamins in it. It is um, heated, so everything is basically yeah, it's not a whole food. So I would say all of that is actually not that healthy. I think that this is a great topic. I would love to go live with you more to talk about this. <laughs> You're very knowledgeable. And um, yeah, maple syrup. You know, listen, I have maple syrup in my house. Am I going to consider it a health food? No. There are, you know, there's some treats, you know, that you like. Yeah, I don't really believe that's a health food. Uh, do you eat nutritional yeast or do you believe in it? Eh, I. I did. I think it. I think it's not that healthy. But it, I mean, how much do you put in your food? Not that much. But the thing is, because I travel, I cannot really take it with me. So I haven't eaten it in some years. But it's not the end of the world. I think if if it makes your food taste like cheese and you really miss cheese, go for it. I would say. Yeah. So I went through that. I went through the whole phase of being, you know, raw foodist, unhealthy, and then trying to learn what was perfect being on the perfect, perfect, perfect raw food diet. And then I found out that it wasn't the perfect raw food diet. And so instead of giving up, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to be uh, uh, so consumed with being perfect anymore. So now, once in a while, if I want nutritional yeast, I will have nutritional yeast. If I want maple syrup once in a while, I'll have that. If I want some cacao once in a while, I'll have that. But I will not have this every day because I know it's not healthy. But we cannot we don't want to strive for perfection. We want to strive for progress wherever you're at. You just want to be progressively better every day and have those treats. Okay. We have another question. That is a great question. She can't have, she doesn't like veggies without salt. Okay. So I think that's yeah. what the issue was she like eats cooked veggies, but they have salt in them. So of course you don't feel good when you eat salt. Salt is very dehydrating. It's not a health food at all. There are some things that I will never have again, which is like salt, oil, animal products, um, gluten, things like that. What I would recommend to you is for, you've got to c get your salt from other places, okay? I would recommend you start making celery juice every day. Or if you don't have a juicer, start eating celery, eating more greens, more salty vegetables, okay? Um, also, seaweed is great to satisfy your salty cravings. Um, somebody the other day told me, I screenshot it, DM me, uh, whoever asked that question and I'll send you, somebody recommended, um, there was some salt that is made from asparagus. Okay. Cool. I didn't know. And like, it's asparagus salt or something like this. Right. And it's raw vegan and it's, it's like a healthy alternative to salt, find alternatives, but really celery juice seems to help me a lot if I'm craving salt. Um, or just eat celery. Would you agree, Eva? Yep. I agree so much, definitely. And something that I do is, for example, dry tomatoes, and I have the store in the Canary Islands where I can buy them, and there's a little bit of salt in them, but before I use them, I just uh, wash them with water, so to put off, put off the salt. And it's not. I think it's not the best solution because there's still some salt left, but if you if you don't avoid salt 100 percent then it could be an option to use maybe sun-dried tomatoes or if you have a dehydrator i would definitely recommend because i did it also to dehydrate your own tomatoes because you don't need to use any salt and it becomes really really salty it's really and it gives the tomato a whole different flavor so that's really cool yeah i, I that's what i do because i simply cannot find uh sun-dried tomatoes without oil and salt mm -hmm. so I, that's why I have a dehydrator, honestly, for the sun-dried tomatoes. And I make my own, you can make your own like um, uh, dried fruit as well if you'd like to do that for a treat. Uh, last question for Eva. Um, so somebody said, my parents don't understand raw foods. Cooked food is fine, but they don't understand her being raw vegan. And her parents are not vegan. And I always 
I want to be fully raw, but they're just not understanding. So now, uh, I would say to that, uh, they're not going to understand until you've been doing it for a very long time and they see the results in your health, in your life, and when they have health issues. Then they will come to you and listen, I've been raw vegan for over 10 years. My mom, for the first eight years, right, or more, nine years maybe, she was, she called me fanatic. I was crazy. I was like weird. I was going to die, uh, you know, all this stuff, you know, and now once she, um, now she, you know, anytime she has a health issue, she comes to me and asks, so what, uh, what would you do? What fruit or vegetable helps with this? I tell her and she eats it, you know, and now she mm -hmm. really takes my advice because I have proven with time, you know, that I'm healthy, I'm happy, this diet is not gonna kill me, I don't have a protein deficiency, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking unhealthy. So that, there's nothing you can do. People are not gonna take your advice or understand until you've been doing it for a long time. That's just is what it is. And also I would recommend that you understand that your family and friends will not support you until strangers celebrate you. And what I mean by that, yes, you know, I heard that and I was like, oh, that makes sense. What I mean by that is maybe you want to start a YouTube channel. Maybe you want to start an Instagram channel and inspire the world. And then once the world is celebrating you, your family and friends are going to be like, wow, oh my God, you're amazing. What are you know? Wow. What do you eat again? I want to be like you. I want to look like you. So Eva, what would you say to people that are like feeling like they're not getting support from their friends or family or their parents are like, you know, same with your parents. They were concerned with you eating, you know, raw vegan. Yeah, for sure. So first, everything that you said makes complete sense to me. And I agree so much. And for me, there's there are a lot of things. First of all, if you really want something, you have to make it work and you have to make it happen, no matter if people agree or not. That's something that I've learned because if I would have done everything that my parents said, probably I would be very unhappy because they just have certain plans for you or they think, okay, this should be the reality for my child, but you have your own character, you have your own information, so you have to do what is best for you. And that's the only way you can be happy and you can, in my case, be healthy because my parents still believe that meat is healthy or something. So do do what you need to do, basically. Second thing is, um, yeah, just come from a perspective of love because I, I actually, in the beginning, was a little bit rough with my parents because I was like, I will do it and I will do my things. For me, going vegan was my rebellious phase uh, because I started when I was 15 and I was like, no, I, I make my own food. Um, but I would recommend now to come from a place of love and say, be more understanding, communicate more, say, yes, this is really important to me. I've done a lot of research. Here's the research. Here are people who are already doing it. And to understand that if your parents criticize you, it often comes from a place of love or from a place of scares, like them being sick, scared because there's so many myths about the Ravigan diet. And so they think that, for example, if you go Ravigan or fruit based, that you will end up malnourished and you just have to be nice to them, communicate to them, hey, this is not happening because of this and this and this. Because in life, what I'm now learning more and more, also with my boyfriend, there will always be conflicts, always, 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 you have a different opinion. And it's not really about conflict, it's more about how you communicate with them if you come from a place of love or if you come from a place of rebellion or you want to win. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just understand that your parents, they hopefully love you and want the best for you and yeah but still do your own thing wow great advice dude and what you said is so true it's not what you say it's how you say it it's not what you say guys it's how you yeah. say it. communication is something that they do not teach us in school and we need to take our lives into our own hands take responsibility for our communication skills read books on communication go to youtube and learn how to communicate better because what you just said if i would have taken your advice 10 20 years ago i would have had such better relationships in my life i didn't know how to communicate especially to my family who was criticizing me for eating fruit at you know thanksgiving or at like family events and saying that you know like this is not healthy this can't be healthy it's too much sugar you know still to this day to this day, people still tell me I'm eating too much sugar. 
I mean, listen, I would have diabetes by now. It's been over 10 years of eating too much. Me too. You know? Me too. And the other Me thing too. I'm going to say for that advice that I, I just remembered um, is that, listen, Eva's adv advice is the best. Do it with love, okay? Also, just know you shouldn't really be taking advice from anybody you don't want to trade places with, okay? Now, I'm thinking since your parents are not vegan, I'm guessing they might have some health issues, okay? After a certain age, you are going to have health issues if you are not following a plant-based diet. That's just a fact. Find me, it's very rare to find someone in their 40s, 50s, 60s that does, does not have you know, medical issues from eating animal body parts. We're just not meant to eat those body parts. And by the way, somebody asked uh, Latasha, how, hi ladies, how can I start my vegan journey? Okay, listen, you wanna, this is like, this is gonna be so exciting and amazing for you because you have no idea how amazing you're gonna feel. First of all, I'm sure Eva would also re re uh, agree with me. You're gonna wanna watch a few documentaries, okay? Go to Netflix and watch Game Changers. I would really recommend Earthlings. It's gonna shake you to your core, okay? There's another one called, uh, Eva, which one would you recommend if you could only choose one? If I only could choose one, good question. I, I, I think Earthlings is a great, a new one is Dominion, which is great. Dominion. Yeah, 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 Dominion. There are more. There's um, one that I watched with my boyfriend was Cowspiracy. There's Forks Over Knives. And there's also one really, really nice movie. It's, um, it's one from South Korea and it's called Okja. And it's, I, I love this movie so much because it's, it's, Amazing. It, it um, indirectly criticizes factory farming and capitalism. It's amazing. It's from the same um, from the same filmmaker who also created Parasite. Maybe you watched it. It's also really criticizing capitalism, but it's it's amazing. So Okja. Yeah, I would yeah, recommend it. recommended What the Health, Cowspiracy. So watch like maybe two or three of those. Okay, really definitely watch Dominion or Earthlings because this is what you need to know the truth, okay? And if you don't know the truth yet, you're in for a shock on where your food is coming from. Now, after you watch those documentaries, then you want to get some type of recipe um, book, you know, to help you get healthy vegan recipes. Because if you go vegan and you fall into the unhealthy junk food vegan trap, it's gonna be very hard for you to get out of it, okay? Uh, it's very addicting, all this vegan crap, this junk food, the Beyond Beef, the donuts, the cupcakes, the candies. This is very addicting. This food has been created to get you addicted to it and for profit. So I would honestly, honestly recommend check out the bundle that we are offering right now because it has so many hundreds and hundreds of healthy vegan recipes cooked and raw. And if you're just going vegan, I would highly recommend you eat... Uh, some raw food, you're right. You want to eat some fresh fruit and vegetables, but you eat some cooked food, right? You don't want to go straight raw vegan because you're going to miss too much, right? You're going to miss your pasta and your bread and things, yeah. meat, dairy. And so this is a great bundle for you. It contains uh, lots of different cooked, healthy recipes, uh, fresh raw food recipes. And um, listen, you're going to get a meal plan guide from me, which is what I eat every single day. Eva has an amazing, simple uh, raw vegan recipe book with how many recipes? I think uh, like over 30. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Simple, but delicious, easy recipes, smoothies, smoothie bowls, um, you know, different like things you can do with just fruit and vegetables, you know? It's so simple and easy. And um, yeah, that's what I recommend. You got to make the connection with the animals first and then think about your health because you're never going to be able to do it just for you, right? Everything we do in our lives, it's hard for us to just do it just as a selfish thing. You know, I want to get healthier. But when you realize that you are supporting every single time you buy a dead animal body part or the secretion from an animal, you are supporting animal cruelty. And I know that you do not want that. None of us on earth, none of us want to support animal cruelty. Uh, we'll be in touch, Mr. Vegan. Yes, DM me. Uh, we need a celebration bell for these people who want to learn about a cruelty feed. Yes, Sherry, we need one of those bells. You know, when somebody says they want to go vegan, it like, it's like so amazing because I just, it makes me like, 
it makes me so happy to know that one less animal is going to be tortured and hurt. You know, the less we buy, the less they'll produce. The less animals will have to be produced oh, one day. Eva, do you think one day the whole world will be vegan or you think that's crazy? Like you think that's too much? I think yes, I think yes. Like 100% because if we continue the way that we do, I mean, the world will be, <laughs> the world will be going down. So I, I think yes, but unfortunately I think that in, in the next maybe 100 years, all of the maybe developing countries will first go into eating meat and then the developing countries, maybe I could be wrong, go more into direction veganism. And then after that, again, developing countries go also vegan. So I believe yes, but maybe 200 years. I could imagine. I hope not, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, no, I see it. Okay, last question, I promise. I love talking to you. Okay, if you could tell everyone in the world, okay, so say that everyone in the world put on headphones and you could tell every single person in the world uh, one thing, what would you tell them? And this is going to be translated into all languages. Uh, it's everyone from all ages, all countries. What would you say to every single person in the world? I would, I would for sure say go fruit-based vegan because for me, if you look more into it and you really study everything, like connection between food and diet and veganism, how it affects your health, this is, and the environment and the animals, this is really a solution for so many big problems. And for me personally, I think that pol politics they focus on different things to help people and like or how to help poverty or some some things and they could do so much more benefits if they would just explain more about veganism because if you have yeah if you focus more on veganism if you would teach people how to eat healthy this would eliminate so many big problems that we have today so this would be the thing that i say yeah, Deep, Deepak just said that. If we just do what is healthy for us, it will help heal the planet as well. You know? For sure. It's like, it's just like love. It comes down to love is the answer. You know, it sounds corny, but like every single problem in the world with our health, with our relationships, love is the answer. Treating people with love and respect, treating the animals with love and respect, treating the planet with love and respect, treating our bodies with love and respect. This is the answer to all of our health problems and all of our world problems. Yeah. For sure. For Thank sure. So much, Eva. I love talking to you. Uh, how, how old are you, by the way? Uh, 21. 21. Yeah. You are so young and so wise. I have yeah. a feeling you are old soul. You know, you've been here a few times, I think, um, because you're just so young. And how do you know all this? I mean, <laughs> at 21, I did not have this outlook on life and did not have all the knowledge you have. So. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being you. And guys, if you want to check out uh, Eva's new book, uh, first of all, go subscribe to Eva. That's number one. Number two, uh, go check out the link in her bio or in my bio. It contains a bundle of a bunch of amazing 100% vegan recipe books, cooked food, raw vegan recipes, um, and you will not regret it. This bundle can change your life. It can be the catalyst to you finally having the health and the body and the life that you deserve, that you really, really came here to experience. We did not come here on earth to experience uh, just survival. We came here to thrive and feel our best and look our best. And thank you so much, Eva, you're amazing. Yes, the younger generation are way smarter than us. Yes, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but also thank you so much. And I forgot to say, you look really pretty. Like I love your outfit, really pretty. Thank you so much, Eva. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate you. Uh, and you are a beautiful, beautiful vegan goddess yourself. And so we're just reflecting off each other and I love it. <laughs> and you really inspire me. You really inspire me to Think more as to like, how can I communicate in a more loving way to people, you know, because I can be harsh sometimes and an angry vegan sometimes, and that's not going to change the world. And, um, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you guys for being here. If you want to watch this again, it'll be on my YouTube. It'll probably be on Eva's YouTube as well. And so check that out. And thank you very much. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.